welcome to another edition of ProSoft Technologies Video Training. In this short tutorial, I'll show you how to configure the MVI 56E module in order to go online and obtain diagnostic data from the module. So let's go ahead and open up PCB now. Notice that when PCB starts, it actually loads the last configuration file that was used. So what we can do from here, we can create a new file, or we can just use the existing file. I'm going to go ahead and use the existing file. So you'll notice within PCB, it has a standard menu bar up top. Well, we're not going to use that menu bar. What we are going to use is right clicks on the left hand window tree, and we'll be performing all of our functions with right clicks. So from now, I'm going to right click on default project and I want to choose to add a new project so click on add project now you give your project a name now you can right click on the project you just added click on add location and you can give your location a name now we'll choose to add our module so we'll click right click we'll choose add module we'll go down to choose module type we'll select the MVI 56E filter and choose the MVI 56E-MCM and then click OK. Now we'll set up the MVI 56E-MCM and get ready to go online. The PC running the PCB software can go online with the MVI 56E using one of the following methods. First, the PC can directly connect to the Ethernet port on the MVI 56E and the second option is to bridge through a 1756 ENBT module within the control logics rack. This is handy when other Rockwell automation networks are being used and bridging is required. Okay, so from here we can right click on our module name, go to diagnostics, click on connection, and then connection setup. Now notice in the select connection drop down menu you have two options. You have Ethernet and you have 1756 ENBT. For now, I'm going to go ahead and use Ethernet. I'm going to click on Browse Devices. And now you get a list of all the MVI 56E modules that are on your network. I happen to know that this is my particular EMBT. You can also match it up by the MAC address. So you can assign it a temporary IP address if needed. You can go to Device Details, and it lists details for that particular module. We can right click, we can go to remove temporary IP had we assigned it one, and we can also go to the web page. The module has a built in web page that has some really good technical notes, user manuals, add on instruction software, and other resources and links for information on the Modbus and Rockwell automation products. So I'm going to go ahead and close the web page. Now I'm going to right click on my unit again and choose select for PCB. Now what that does, that adds the IP address in the Ethernet field there. So now I can click on test connection and you see that the connection is successful. Now what I'll do, I'll set it up the other way going through a 1756 ENBT. So I'll click on CIP path edit and here's where you see the CIP connect path editor window. Now I know that my source is going to be the 1756 ENBT and I happen to know my IP address of my ENBT. You can also use RS links to get that. Mine is 10.1.4.170 and I know that I'm going to a 1756 module and I know that my module is in slot number one. So I'll click on construct CIP path and then click OK. I can click on test connection and that connection is also good. So we'll click OK there and now I'll click on the connect button and you'll see that we're connected. I'm only going to touch on a few items within the diagnostics interface and I recommend you reference the MVI 56E-MCM user manual to get a full description of each of the different items. So the first thing we'll do is we'll click on the connection item in the menu above, click on options, and here is where we would set the poll time for the diagnostic settings. 
Right now it's set at one second. So we'll click on log. And now I'm going to log everything to file. So everything I do within the PCB diagnostics is going to be logged to a file, which we can use later for support information or just other diagnostic references. So now I'm going to stop logging. I'm going to go to view log file. So now we can take a look at the log file. So notice that every option that I clicked on within the diagnostic window is logged to the log file. Now I'll show you one example of how this log file might actually be used. So up top we can click on log and email log to support. And if you have a mail client such as Outlook, it'll open a new email window. And you see that we have three files attached. We have the Watt TCP file, which is your Ethernet settings. We have the MVI56E config file, which is the complete configuration of the module. And we have the PCB log file. These are three key pieces of information that may be needed by our technical support staff when opening a new support case with our technical support department. Now the last thing we'll take a look at is the data analyzer. Click on module and then data analyzer and now we can set up the data analyzer. So right now I'm going to put it on no ticks so this will not display any timing ticks. There's a couple different ways to start it. You can go to the menu and start it or you can click on the start button. So now it starts the data analyzer. And now we can see that the module is generating traffic on our Modbus port number one. So I'll stop it. Now I'll click on the setup button again and I'll show you the difference of what it looks like. So I'll click on 10 millisecond timing ticks. And now you see the difference here between what it looks like with timing ticks and what it looks like without timing ticks. This is extremely useful information when debugging a problem device on your Modbus network. Okay, notice that each underscore, capital TT underscore, so that's four characters, an underscore, a capital T, another capital T, and another underscore. So each underscore TT underscore, that is one 10 millisecond tick. Now right now I don't have any slave devices connected to my Modbus network so in this data analyzer you don't see any response data coming back. All you see is the R plus which signifies that the module is generating traffic for that port. So it's taking the line high and then you see the 8 bytes for the Modbus read function. And then you see the R minus which signifies the module is releasing the line. I've already showed you how to assign a temporary IP address to the module and now I'll show you how to assign a permanent IP address to the module. From here I'll double click on Ethernet configuration and then you see the Watt TCP window open. In here you simply modify the My IP, NetMask and Gateway sections to reflect the IP address, Gateway and NetMask that you want your unit to use. Once you've done all that you can go ahead and click the OK button. Okay, now that I have the IP entered in, I'll right click on the device name, choose download from PC to device, and now I'm going to click on browse devices, and since the module is using an IP address that's out of my subnet range, I'm going to assign a temporary IP address, and the software automatically enters in a temporary IP address, click OK. Now I'll right click and I'll select for PCB and we'll close the discovery window and you'll notice that the temporary IP address is in there now I'll click download and you see that our download succeeds and our module is running so this concludes this short tutorial if you have any questions by all means contact our technical support group and please reference the MVI 56 MCM training video for information on how to configure the individual Modbus communication parameters. Until next time, happy training. Bye.